Hello guys, hello, hello. Welcome to my first ever YouTube video. My name is Kwamina Jo, so let me start by introducing myself. I live in the Netherlands. But yes, uh, the reason why I decided to do this is because I wanted to challenge myself. I've always been intrigued when it comes to YouTube. I've always been like, what would it be like? I'm a very curious person. And when I get curious, I just have to try it sometimes firsthand. Disclaimer, not all curiosities you have to try yourself, but if it's in my capabilities and it isn't like gonna kill me or make me addicted to something, I will for sure try it. Now, this is the story all about how my life got turned upside down and I would like to take a minute, just sit right there and I tell you how I became unemployed and unprepared. At 30. I don't know if you guys follow me on social media at Kamina Jo on Instagram, but a few months ago I posted a picture of me getting a letter that I had to go back home. I had four weeks to leave the country. I got the letter on the fourth on the 15th of February, so I had until the 15th of March to leave the country because my residence permit application got denied so yes there's a story about how my life got turned upside down because i was like what am i gonna do now but anyways let's begin from the beginning with that story i was working for a startup last year they specialize in education on topics such as digital literacy but and it was very nice, very interesting work. And they had applied for my residence permit through a payroll company because I am a highly skilled immigrant. What is a highly Im skilled immigrant, you ask? That is someone that has done a master's or a study in the Netherlands or abroad, but it's like higher level education. And when you are one of those immigrants or like if you fall into that category there are certain things that you can and cannot do and there are certain things that a company has to have in order to hire you so the company did not have the requirements or did not meet all the requirements to hire me directly <coughs> Ooh, to hire me directly so they in uh, like they contacted a payroll company and they applied for my visa I was a researcher while doing the work for them and I kind of like, I mean, it wasn't my area of expertise so when they applied for my residence permit I didn't question it but there are different categories in which you fall as a highly skilled immigrant so you can be just the employee or you can also be a researcher. Anyways, that detail of not being categorized as a researcher, I wasn't linked to an official research institute because they went through a payroll company, is what ended up being my demise when I applied for my own residence permit. So, as I said, I was working for the startup by the summer of 2021 last year they were like hey we're in financial stress we're not going to be able to extend your contract but they managed to extend it till december at the time i wasn't that bummed out like the months leading up to december i wasn't that bummed out that my contract wasn't getting extended because it was a startup for which I worked and it was very taxing on just my energy levels and it was just a whole lot of work. And by the, by the summer of last year, I was actually feeling kind of the early signs of a burnout. I was very tired. I didn't have a lot of energy and I was also feeling quite low emotionally. So I think I knew that I, I, I knew that something had to change but anyway so we continued until December and I me knowing that my contract was gonna 
end. So in November, one month before my contract ends, I decided to apply for my own residence permit, which was then a search year. Because I read that if you finalize a research or if you complete a research, you can apply for this type of visa or if you complete a new study. I completed a research and I was like, oh, this applies to me. So I go, I submit it. I know I'm finishing the job by the 6th of December and then I'll have time to just decompress and just chill out for a second and just take it easy. Everything is going according to plan. Everything is going like smooth sailing. On the 15th of December, I go to the immigration office because I want to get a certain ticket so that I can at least work while I am waiting for the decision of the immigration so that I can at least just do some freelancing and just, you know, do enough to just get by but still like work one or two days and then just take it easy the other days and focus on what I want to do next and search for my next job opportunity. Anyways, I go on the 15th of December, I go to the immigration office, I go to the immigration office and this dude is like, mm, mm, there's a chance that this might get denied. And I'm like, what? And he's, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I think, I think it will get denied. I don't know. And I'm like, but I, I meet the requirements and I finished the research and he's like, well, go ahead and submit all the evidence that you have or at least submit a letter and i leave that office holding back tears because i wasn't gonna cry in front of no immigration officer no i will not give them that joy i was like cool 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 cool, cool, cool. straight face and when i left that office i was walking down the streets and i was just like oh my gosh tears just on my face and i was like oh my gosh oh yes because the guy also said like while i'm waiting for the outcome i can't work me can't work me can't work i was like what what of course my world was shut up crumbled and i was like what am i gonna do now Anyways, there's this ruling that if you've worked here for a while, you get this, is it a subsidy or is it some type of um, alimony or something from the government? You know, like you get it every month because you've worked for a period of time here and you pay your taxes. So I applied for that and I got it. I think it's almost 75% of your salary. So I applied for that and I got it. And um, thank God I don't have high living expenses so i was able to just get by we fast forward to the 14th of february and i call back to the office and in the meantime while these months passed like from december to february i was calling the immigration office frequently and i was telling them like hey this is my situation and they were checking with me and they were like oh yeah yeah you still apply yeah like you 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 can apply for this like yeah you meet the requirements and i'm like okay bad cool I'm also applying for jobs and I'm telling them like, like I still have one procedure up in the air and they're like, okay, no worries. In the meantime, so while I'm waiting from December to February, I get two job offers, but none of them are immigration or like approved by the immigration office to hire highly skilled immigrants. So I call off one and I tell them like, hey, this is a situation and I myself tell them, like, tell them like you know what? I'm not gonna work for you because this is a situation and they fully understand it. Then I got another job and that one I really liked. I was really hyped to start with that one. And that was, I got the job the last week of, so the first week of February, I heard that I got the job. So I told them firsthand like, hey, I'm dealing with some things from the immigration office and this is the situation. And they're like, oh no, we totally understand. No worries, we can wait. And but they still wanted to hire me. Fast forward to then the 14th of February, I called the immigration office and the dude is like, yeah. So it turns out they, when they applied for my visa, like the payroll company that I was talking about in the beginning, they don't have a certain code to which they can prove that you are a researcher. So on the basis of that, we are gonna deny 
your application and I was like <laughs> on the 14th of February the day of love and friendship you're gonna play in my face like that and by the 15th of February the next day the decision was final my residence permit application got denied on that technicality received a letter that I that I then had one month to leave the country. I started packing up my things and I was also thinking like, okay, will I, what will I do? The place that had offered me the job, I contacted them and they were like, okay, yes, we're gonna try and see if we can help you. We're also looking at a payroll type of situation to pay me a payroll that company that, uh, that hires highly skilled immigrants. And then they did their calculations and they were like, mm, this is too much money and they ghosted me. Crickets, just crickets. Anyway, sad day for me again. With that in mind, I was like, you know what, let me then just submit an appeal and continue packing and seeing if I am going to leave the country or not. So I was juggling three things and also on top of that, just life, you know? So it was really like I had to remain so calm because there were days that I would just cry my eyes out and there were days that I was what's going on like how did my life just totally turn around and life comes at you quick life comes at you real quick because like last year I was just like traveling going on vacation going here and there and this year the first six months were just like, what's going on? So I was like, oh my gosh, what has my life become? I decide, I submit the appeal, and then I, while I'm still packing, I then also apply for a job, but this time around, I just, I only looked at companies that I knew for sure that had the residence permit, and I was no longer just searching for a job because it had to be something that I was extremely passionate about. Because I had come to the realization that I'm the type of person that wanted to have this job that, that has meaning, which is very much important. But I was searching for a job with meaning for all the wrong reasons, if you get my drift. I was looking for a job that I could kind of lose myself in because the sad reality was that in these four years to five years that I've lived in the Netherlands, there are often times that I have felt extremely lonely and the constant factor was either my masters or my work. I wanted another job in which I could lose myself in order for me to ignore that feeling of loneliness, if you get what I'm saying. I was looking for these jobs that I knew were gonna be a challenge, that I knew they were gonna be extremely demanding. But once I, um, I didn't get the second job and they ghosted me, I had to take a clear look at myself and I was like, okay, what do I really want? And then I realized, okay, I still wanna live in the Netherlands. I still wanna, you know, experience things here, but I no longer wanna lose myself in a job. So I started looking at things that were also in other areas of expertise, such as research, such as analytics, and then I found my current job and they are able to hire highly skilled immigrants. So the end result of those six months are summed up that I have found a job that is no longer sucking the life out of me. I get my money, so I'm no longer hiding myself or escaping in my job because God was like you're not finished you're not done in the Netherlands which brings me to my next point is that this these past six months were a blessing <laughs> but also a challenge and I would say a blessing because there is beauty in the valley there's beauty in the trials and tribulations we go through and i really had to sit with the uncomfortable feeling of loneliness 
I had to look at my people pleasing tendencies and I had to look at the ways in which I linked my self worth with my job. If I wasn't making money or didn't have a fun job, then I felt empty or I felt less than, which is very stupid, but to be honest, a lot of us link our identity and our self-worth to what we do and i think it'd be a product of a capitalistic society if you agree <laughs> let me know in the comments down below but i think it's very important to evaluate and to realize who you are outside of your job outside of that title and what do you bring to the table what are your qualities what are your skills and how do you make people feel and how do people make you feel? And adding to that, I was also talking about people pleasing and the loneliness is because I realized that in these four years I would over pour or over extend myself for the wrong reasons again. I wanted to prove my worth to people that I was worthy of them inviting me to family gatherings. I was worthy of them. Um, inviting me to go out with them so that I didn't feel lonely because the thing is I, I'm very attached to my nucleus like and I'm talking specifically about my mom my dad and my brother and making a move on my own to the Netherlands was quite scary and I and I, I, I kind of underestimated that void how empty my life would feel without them in my near presence so when I got here I constantly just wanted to be surrounded by people I wanted to become family with my friends I wanted them to see me as an extension of their family and then I would overextend myself I would just do too much and in these months I realized that for the people that I was actually doing too much they were doing they were not doing enough for me it was always me just going to them or, or me making it intense efforts for them because of course I was trying to prove my worth so having realized that I also came to the conclusion that I don't like half of the people that I was trying to please <laughs> It's a sick thing, but I don't like them. How are you trying to please people that when you look at it, you don't even like them? So being at home for these past months and taking it easy and taking a lot of steps back from everybody and everything around me made me realize that loneliness is a feeling that only goes away once you look it in the eyes. And once you unmask the reason why you're lonely uh, and the beauty is that you will find the reason why of course you feel this way I think we also live in a, in a hyper connected but hyper individualistic society and it's easy to think that people are having fun with others and they're not including you but once you go there you're, you realize like oh I could have stayed home and in these past months I've enjoyed my company I already have always enjoyed my company but this time even more and I realized that I have so much to offer and I'm very big on reciprocity so if people want to hang out with me you gotta also reciprocate I also want to add to this that God kept me safe and provided for these past months if it wasn't for God I don't know where I would have been. I walk by faith, not by sight, because as I said numerous times, I was packed up, ready to go. Like one click, ticket in hand, out the door, out the country. But God was like, nah, no, 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 no. Your journey in the Netherlands is not finished yet. And I feel my life has expanded. My mind, my mind, my heart, has it have expanded in ways that I didn't even think was possible and yeah so now that I am in a better headspace I have decided it's time to conquer other fears time to conquer other challenges if I fear something I want to conquer it or if I'm curious about something I want to try it so here I am follow me like comment and subscribe there's more ahead as I said, like I've had this idea for a while now, so I have content from last year when I went back home that I <clears throat> do want to show you guys so that I can give a glimpse of my home country 
and I also went on my solo trip last year for my birthday so I also I will also be uploading that and I will also be doing the most random stuff but I will also be having sit downs anyway this is just a channel for me to keep exploring who I am as a person what interests me and I've just decided to take you guys along with my journey other than that, thank you very much for watching throughout this whole video and I look forward to just building my own community with you guys. Bye!